Hey guys, Renee Jewett, IFBB Pro here, and today I'm gonna to talk to you about cardio. Some of us love it, some of us hate it. Whether you love it or hate it, I think it has application across the board for everyone, whether you're in off-season, contest prep, or you're a non-competitor with physique goals, or you just want the health benefits that come with it. So the first form of cardio that I'm gonna to talk to you today about is called NEAT, N-E-A-T non-exercise activity thermogenesis, which is basically just a long fancy name to describe all the activity that you do throughout the day that does not include sleeping, eating, or exercise. So that includes everything that you do, shopping, walking the dog, cleaning the house, doing yard work. It's probably the easiest and most versatile way to burn calories. Now to monitor your needs, what I like to do is use a step count tracker. You know, they make a range of different step count trackers. This is just a cheap one that I got on Amazon. I know that Apple makes a really fancy one that monitors your activity throughout the day. What I like to do is just count steps. So uh, just for an example, during contest prep, I had a step count goal every day of 11,000 steps. So my step track counter kind of kept track of my activity. And of course, since we all want to get lazy and sluggish during contest prep, since our energy availability is probably pretty low, um, this kind of keeps you accountable to stay active and keep burning calories that you otherwise would not. So I think NEAT has application across the board for everyone, whether you're in contest prep or off season or for the non-competitor. You know, it may seem inconsequential uh, parking further away from the grocery store or taking the stairs, but these little things add up to big results. So the next form of cardio is LISS, L-I-S-S, -S, Low Intensity Steady State Cardio. So basically this is a continuous, steady, moderate effort that is sustained for an extended period of time. Now LISS increases endurance and doesn't put a lot of stress on the cardiorespiratory system. Since this is a moderate effort form of cardio, it's not very taxing and typically generates very little fatigue that won't impact your strength training sessions. Now, the only downfall to this um, is a time component. Since it is steady state, um, if you're trying to lose fat, you have to work out for you know, longer periods depending on your calorie expenditure needs. And HIT, high intensity interval training. HIT alternates between short periods of intense anaerobic exercise with less intense recovery periods in between. So an example of HIT could look something like 30 seconds of cycling as fast as possible on a high resistance followed by a minute of uh, slow, easy cycling at a low resistance. HIT is, you know, demanding both mentally and physically, and it uh, generates a ton of muscle damage and generates a ton of fatigue. So therefore it can, you know, really affect your hypertrophy training sessions. So this isn't something that I would try and do, you know, right before you're gonna smash legs. Um, I would keep HIT um, on your upper body days and the farthest away from your tr weight training session as you possibly can. Um, HIT is nice because it's a big time saver and it gives you a, a lot of bang for your calorie expenditure buck. Now we want to put cardio in place that it will have the least impact on our gym performance. So doing a HIT session right before you plan on smashing legs, like I said, probably not a great idea. The farther away from your lower body training you can get it, that's going to be the best. I would try to avoid doing HIT. Um, on lower body days, since it can generate a high amount of fatigue, um, as a general rule, I would limit the number of HIT and list sessions no more than the same amount of resistance training sessions per week. So if you're weight training, say, four days a week, that means no more than four days of cardio. If cardio is done on the same day, day as hypertrophy training, I would stick with lists and try to arrange it so it's six hours before or after your training. I hope that kind of clears up cardio for everyone and kind of helps you personalize the cardio that you'd like to put in place dependent on your goals. If you have any questions, leave them below and I'd be happy to answer them.